Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we're going to look at Gung Ho. This is the G.I. Joe Classified Series Gung Ho from Wave 2 of the Classified Series. This is the series of 6-inch G.I. Joe action figures. This figure was released this year in 2020. This figure is an homage to version 1 of Gung Ho, released in 1983. Gung Ho was G.I. Joe's first Marine. He had a Marine Corps utility cover, the green 8-pointed cap on his head, and a big Marine Corps emblem tattooed on his chest. The original Gung Ho figure had a light blue uniform, a grenade launcher, and a light blue backpack. Even though I love this figure and I became fascinated with the Marine Corps because of Gung Ho, I was never a fan of the light blue color. This classified version of Gung Ho keeps some elements of the original but updates it in some important ways. Some of those updates are great and even preferable, but other updates are quite Questionable. The most important thing about Gung Ho is that he was a Marine. Everything about him just screams U.S. Marine Corps, but it's uncertain whether this classified Gung Ho is a Marine. Let's look at the box, and the box has the G.I. Joe logo, and it says classified series Gung Ho. It has a portrait of Gung Ho here, and I like the artwork. The artwork is pretty good. Uh, there's some additional artwork on the side. One thing I think is interesting that's different from the figure is they've covered up his chest. He's wearing a shirt under that vest, possibly so they wouldn't have to put the tattoo that's on the figure in the artwork. You've probably already noticed that is not a Marine Corps emblem, but we will talk about that more when I look at the figure. Let's finish looking at the box. The back of the box has the poster style artwork that is the same for Wave 1 and Wave 2 figures, with the exception of the exclusive figures. On the top of the box and on the side without the artwork, we see this is number 7 in the series. This side of the box also has a series of symbols, and this relates to Gung Ho's abilities. You can go to G.I. Joe and look up what each of these means. This top one is Environmental Specialist 3. This one is Heavy Weapons 2. This one is Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat 2. And this one is Jungle Combat 3. The inside of the box has the blue star and the blue coloring indicates a hero figure. That interior sleeve can be removed and it makes a nice backdrop for the figure. A lot of collectors have been doing it that way, and that's a nice way to display the figure uh, without having the box behind him. I have a strong affinity for the character of Gung Ho, and there are aspects of this figure that I like a lot, but there are other parts of the figure that really bring down my enthusiasm for it. Let's take a look at Gung Ho's accessories, and I'm going to start by turning him around and taking this one off of his backpack because it doesn't fit on very well, and it keeps falling off. This has got to be the most annoying of the accessories. It is a grenade launcher, it appears to be anyway, and that makes sense for Gung Ho. He did traditionally have a grenade launcher. This one looks like a drum-fed multi-shot grenade launcher, so that's different from the original grenade launcher he came with. Looks more like Hardball's grenade launcher. I do not like this accessory. I think it's supposed to be the one that's closest to the vintage accessory, but uh, it's the most annoying one. First of all, it has a lot of loops. It has a loop here, loop here, loop here, and then this hook thing here that looks like it's supposed to serve some purpose, but it doesn't appear to, and another hook down here, and it's just all loops and hooks. It is very difficult to get in the figure's hand, and this grip on the top was bent like this straight out of the box. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be. It's in a metallic silver color, which I think is all right. All of his weapons are. This top handle here can be hooked on the bottom hook of the backpack. At least that's where I assume it's supposed to go. It doesn't seem to fit anywhere else. There are other hooks on the backpack where you can hook his other two weapons. It doesn't attach very well though, so if you move the figure around, it will fall off. His next accessory, and the one I usually keep in his hand, is this sort of shotgun looking thing. I guess it's a laser shotgun or whatever. It actually looks a little bit more like the vintage accessory than the multi-shot grenade launcher does. He does grip it quite well, but it can be removed from his hand, um, and we can take a closer look at it. It is in that metallic silver plastic like the other one. It has a squared off barrel, so it's not a real shotgun. It must be some kind of laser, even though it looks like it has pump action. On the backpack, there are these two hooks on the side of the backpack 
back and you can place this weapon right on those hooks. So I like having storage for the accessories. Um, I like when a figure can hold or carry all of his accessories. So that is essential. It's an excellent backpack and I'm glad it can hold in theory all three weapons. In order for it to really hold all three weapons you have to move that shotgun way up uh, make sure it's kind of as high on those hooks as you can get it and then you can sling this grenade launcher underneath on that bottom hook so he can carry all three on that backpack but this one will fall out if you just look at it funny let's remove that weapon because we will look at the backpack in a moment but we have one other weapon to look at first and that's this uh, another laser rifle. It's got another squared off barrel like the other one. This is more of a bullpup style rifle. It has the magazine behind the grip, even though this clearly doesn't shoot bullets. This bullpup rifle will fit in the figure's hand. It's a little bit more difficult than the shotgun because that magazine gets in the way a bit, but it will fit and he does grip that very well. As with the shotgun, the bullpup rifle will slot onto the backpack. So that's not bad. Let's take a look at that backpack. Let's remove that. Uh, the backpack has some nice detail. It's in a very dark gray, sort of a greenish gray color. I think it looks fine. Without anything attached, the hooks are a bit obvious, but that's okay with me. I prefer functionality. I'm happy the backpack can actually do something rather than just attach to the figure. The backpack pegs onto the figure with a single peg. That peg goes through a hole in the vest, and there's a hole in the back of the action figure as well. So those two holes have to line up in order for the backpack to fit on well. And that is not always easy to do. I would prefer if this backpack pegged onto the figure a bit more solidly, but that's a problem with several of these accessories. They don't stay on as well as I would like. Gung Ho has a green hat. It is removable, and that's good. I'm glad Gung Ho has a hat, but this appears to be the wrong hat. This looks like an army hat. This is not a Marine Corps utility cover. It is not an eight-pointed cap. It's the right color, it's kind of the right shape, but it's still not right for Gung Ho. This is the first piece that calls into question whether this Gung Ho is a Marine. The hat will stay on the head if you press it on very firmly, but it still wants to fall off. This hat is made of a hard plastic where a soft plastic would have worked better. The vest is a separate piece. I don't know if they intend you to take it off, but it is removable, so let's remove it so we can take a closer look at it. The vest is made out of a softer plastic as the hat should be. Uh, so I think they did the vest with the proper material. The vest has silver shoulder armor on the right side. I think that looks all right. On that side, it also has the communication device with the blue dot that's common to most of the G.I. Joe team figures in this series. We have some black straps. Those are painted. Nice paint application. On the left side, there are three green grenades. That's a separate piece, but it's not removable. There are some spots of silver paint paint on the vest uh, that indicate armor. Uh, there's also a texture pattern on some of the armor plate. Uh, there are some pouches. I think it looks great. It looks like a flak jacket and it's very well done. The primary color for this vest is a dark greenish gray and I like this color. I prefer this color to the classic light blue. There are some additional pieces on the figure that don't look like they're intended to be removed like the forearm armor on the right forearm and the elbow pad on the left elbow and this grenade pouch on the left leg. Let's take a look at Gung Ho's articulation. He's well articulated, as all these classified figures are. He has a hinged and ball jointed head, so he can move his head at pretty much any angle. He can look in any direction. Uh, that's very well done. Great range of motion on that. He has a hinge on the inside of his shoulders, sort of on the outside of his chest for sort of a butterfly motion. Not a great range of motion on that hinge, but it's nice to have that extra articulation. He can swing his arm up at the shoulder and can swivel at the shoulder all the way around. And that upswing is ratcheted, so he will hold a position once you get him there. He has a swivel at the upper part of the bicep, uh, unlike the vintage figures that had the swivel at the bottom of the bicep, so he can swivel the arm all the way around. He has double jointed elbows, great range of motion. He has a swivel at the wrist. He also has a hinge at the wrist. 
So that's good for holding his weapons. That's the same on both wrists. He has the swivel and the hinge on both sides. There's a hinge at the torso, so he has a ratcheted ab crunch. He will hold position. Uh, when he's upright, though, there is a little bit of play in that hinge, but not too bad. I've seen worse. Uh, he also has a swivel at the belt, and he can swivel all the way around. Great range of motion on the torso. For the leg articulation, he can swing his leg forward at the hip and back a little bit, but it tends to swing out rather than back. He has a swivel at the thigh. He has double jointed knees, so good range of motion at the knees. He also has a swivel at the boot. He has hinged ankles and rocker ankles as well. I want to look at the sculpt design and color of Gung Ho, but I think he should be wearing his vest to get the full effect. Before I put it back on though, I'd like to point out something about the parts they used. Nearly every part on this figure is reused from another figure, specifically a Roadblock. And not just one version of Roadblock, the second version of Roadblock, the Target exclusive version, also used almost all the same parts. In fact, it appears there is only one unique part on this figure, and that is the head. Everything else is Roadblock. It's a bit more obvious on the Target Roadblock because he's not wearing a vest, but these guys have the same arms, the same torso, the same waist piece, the same legs with the exception of the knee pad. That's the only difference that I can see. They have the same boots. They even have some of the same extra pieces. That forearm guard, they both have it, different colors. And that grenade pouch, they both have it, just on opposite legs. Of course, we expected Hasbro to reuse parts because it's Hasbro, it's what they do. But it's awfully early in this classified series for such a wholesale reuse of parts. It's not the worst. They did recolor the parts and makes it a little less obvious. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. On his head, Gung Ho has brown hair. He has a jar head haircut. It's not exactly a mohawk. Hawk. And this is fine. Some iterations of Gung Ho were totally without hair, but if you're going to give him hair, I think this is fine. It fits the character, as does the mustache. He has a brown mustache, also very fitting for the character. When I first got this figure, I complained that it looked cross-eyed, and looking under the figure under the bright lights, the effect isn't quite as bad, but it's still there. He does look a bit cross-eyed, and that effect is worse when he's wearing his hat. Overall, good head sculpt, looks like gung-ho, just a slight problem with the paint application on the eyes. Under that vest, he is bare-chested and he has bare arms and a muscular build, and that's good. Gung-ho is supposed to be an exceptionally tough and strong guy. Fans of Gung-ho will have the biggest problem with the chest. He does have a chest tattoo, but it is not the eagle, globe, and anchor from version 1. It is something else, and it's hard to decipher exactly what this is supposed to be. When I first saw this, I thought it looked disturbingly similar to the Nazi-era Reichssadler, which was an eagle emblem used by Germany in World War II. Obviously, that's not what they intended. They never would have released a toy that alludes to Nazi imagery, but the shape of it is eerily similar. He has no nipples, he has no navel, and he has what look like cloth folds on his stomach. Now, that's perfect for a guy with a shirt, not so perfect for the guy without a shirt. He has silver armor on his right forearm. He has a black elbow pad on his left elbow. He's wearing brown gloves with black cuffs. That's all fine, good details. On his waist piece, he has a black belt and a silver buckle. On his legs, he has camouflage. The base color is an olive drab with a dark green camouflage pattern painted on it. I think it looks great. I am thrilled to have camouflage on one of these figures. I think it's unfortunate that the camouflage pattern does not continue to the waist piece. They kind of skimped on the paint there. He has pockets on his thighs. Those look great. He has that black piece with three grenades on it on his left thigh. His left knee is painted black, and it looks like that's supposed to be a knee pad. It is very shallowly sculpted on and somewhat sloppily painted. 
kind of looks like he just has one black knee for no reason. He has silver shin guards strapped to black boots. It looks like those shin guards are kind of buckled onto those boots. On the Wave 1 figures, those shin guards were gold. They are silver on Gung Ho, and I prefer that. They're a bit more subtle, and those boots look great. Would I recommend this figure? That's tough to answer. I'm a big fan of Gung Ho. I have been since 1983, and I'm happy to see him represented in 6-inch scale. Even though this figure is well designed overall, it has great colors, great paint applications, and it looks like Gung Ho, I do have some problems with it, and those problems are not insignificant. I have a problem with the hat. I have a problem with the tattoo. I have a problem with some of the accessories. I have a problem with my cross-eyed example. I have a problem with the fact that so few parts are unique. It really relies on the vest and the hat and the accessories and the color to transform Roadblock into Gung Ho. All of these things dampen my enthusiasm for this figure, and I can understand some collectors giving this one a pass. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Gung Ho. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're thinking of getting this figure, I hope you found it informative. I usually review vintage G.I. Joe toys from the 1980s and 90s, and I'll be getting back to that next week. I'm kind of taking this weekend off, and I still wanted to give you something. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more G.I. Joe toy reviews, and check out my website, hcc788.com. Special thanks to the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. They support the channel on Patreon, and you can too. I'll see you next time with a vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.